Hi everybody and welcome to this video on how to construct the Pico Rail Type Buffer Stop Kit uh, SL40. Like all kits uh, I would recommend getting a prototype photo first, here's one there, so we can see how it should look when it's finished. So now we see what we're going to do, let's look at the kit and how to put it all together. So we'll start off with opening it up, um, simply remove the packaging from around the staple and if you look on the inside of the sleeve you'll find a full set of instructions provided by Pico with a little list of what should come in the pack. The pack itself as we've seen on the list there, you've only got the three items, you've got a left and a right side and the main buffer beam itself. Just check everything's right before we go any further. It's worth noting a few bits to tidy and clean up, mainly the pins here where the beam fits to and these little clips which are used if you're connecting straight to plain rail so if you're using your code 100 track they just clip on there we won't be needing those for this build so we'll be uh, dealing with those a bit later a quick look at the buffer beam uh, you can see the two locating holes for those pins uh, simple moulded details quite nice lamp there on the bracket and depending on the prototype you can just remove that if you want to So now we're familiar with all the pieces in the kit, uh, we'll have a quick test fit for everything, make sure the parts go together right. So let's put the uh, left hand side into the left side of the beam, and obviously the right into the right. You can see here how uh, where the buffer stops meet the rail, and uh, they're handed. So you've got a choice of either having the rail on the inside or the outside with the stops. Personally I always go for the outside. Uh, it's press light for both to be fair, so it doesn't really matter. Um, notice the pips poking through here where Buffer will meet the stops, and um, we can see here also those little track clips I mentioned at the start of the video too. So again, as we go along, we'll get those cleaned up and uh, make them a little bit more realistic. Now, put it all together and see how it looks. It's at this stage before gluing. I recommend we just go around and remove any bits from the kit we don't need, as it's far easier to do it now while it's in pieces than after you glued it all together. In my case, as I said, I'll be removing the unneeded track clips. And they just simply cut away using a small sharp blade or as I'm doing here with a, a scalpel. Just make sure everything's cut nice and neat into the edge. If there's any little bits of burr or flash left over you can clean those away with a little bit of wet and dry or a flat file. Okay so now it's glued together let's have a look at uh, removing those pips from the face of the buffer beam and for that again you'll need your knife. As you can see we've now cut them flush uh, but it has left a couple of flat spots so to help hide those uh, we'll go back over now with the knife and just recut a little bit of that wood grain pattern um, it's not a very difficult job to do but it does make a difference uh, as when the model is painted it will help disguise where the pieces meet as you can see there just that little bit of work has helped to already start disguise a bit where the pin was showing Taking it a little bit further now, a quick touch of wet and dry, just take off a few of the edges, make sure the definition is there with the wood grain, and when you've got it done on both sides and you're happy with the finish, you're just about ready to go to paint. I use a Halfords primer, it's a white car paint and it's safe for plastics. And here it is, I've given the whole kit a once over with the white primer, and as you see it picked out lots of detail, which is quite nice to see check every piece has been covered with a nice even coat where possible uh, any little bits we miss obviously make it more difficult with painting later especially if you're using acrylic rather than enamel paints and we'll have a little look now as well before painting to decide whether or not we're going to keep the lamp and if we are remember it's got to stay white so try not to get any paint on it if you can As you can see, I've chosen to paint this one using Humbrol Acrylic number 113, so it's a nice all over brown. If you're doing a more modern layout, you can actually leave them painted white. An uh, example of this will be down at Leicester, uh, the LIP there, all their stops are painted white. Obviously, I'm not doing that, so this has gone brown. Just check over the kit, make sure the paint is everywhere it needs to be. No bits of primer showing through, not to ruin the model now by leaving bits uh, undone. We've been around the lamp bracket, I've painted the lamp, and once everything is looking right, we now decide whether we're going to take the lamp off or not. Uh, for my prototype, I am, and I'm going to show you how we do that. 
I very carefully cut down the back of the lamp first so we don't cut through the lamp bracket and then gently across the top of the buffer beam so you can then remove the lamp in one like that. We can now save that and use it again later on the layout. It's more bit of detail in the corner somewhere or even uh, pop it down the side of the stops like it's been removed for whatever reason. Uh, we can now see obviously the lamp bracket need attention, just clean up any little bits of flash and we'll also need to repair the paintwork where I've removed it. Obviously on your own layout if you're going to remove uh, the lamp I'd suggest doing that first so you don't have to go back over with the paint. So as you can see I've now repaired the paintwork and um, we'll have a little look at these stops now that's been done. Uh, I think that looks rather good. Like I said at the beginning of this video, use prototype photos wherever you can. Uh, remember that not every set of buffers on the rail network has uh, a lamp fitted at all. Uh, some of them don't even have a lamp bracket. So again, pay attention to those sort of things and uh, it will help your model look more realistic overall when you come to the end. I've just spotted a little bit of paint here that wants repairing, so we'll get that done and then we'll get it on the layout. I'm just testing these buffers now against a bit of test track I've got here and as you can see on this fine scale rail they don't sit down flush to the rail as they should do properly so there'll be a little bit of work needed before we get those to fit right on my own layout. As you can see uh, we have exactly the same problem uh, when fitting the buffers to this little section of Pico Co 100 flexi track. Um, the problem is, is that the buffers themselves are not sitting down properly and there is a step where the buffers meet the rail. Now this is actually caused by the chairs, which is the piece that holds the rail to the sleepers, fouling the bottom of the buffers. The way to correct this problem is, as described in the instructions for the kit, we simply remove the chairs from the sleepers. As you can see, when this is done, they sit down nice and flush to the top of the rail and look much more prototypical. It's at this point now, I just glue them down using a drop of super glue, wait for it to dry and then we can ballast. If you're not sure about ballasting, you can follow the link in the corner to see how I do it. And that's it. As you can see, they're now fitted to the layout and just ready for a touch of weathering and that completes the scene. I do hope you found this video useful, uh, thanks for watching and bye for now.